Who is the Mysterious Stranger? The Mysterious Stranger has appeared in Fallout 1, 2, 3, New Vegas, 4, and Shelter. He almost seems like a throwaway character. We find very little lore about the man. He's never really explained. It sort of seems to be understood that he's just there. He's some phantom guy who shows up out of nowhere to help you in battle and then disappears. We're not supposed to ask questions. We're not supposed to know his true history. He's just the mysterious stranger. But we do find a few hints that paint us a broader history of the Mysterious Stranger, which we will go over now. In Fallout 1 and 2, the Mysterious Stranger looked very different from the Mysterious Stranger we know and love today. In this clip from Fallout 2, the Mysterious Stranger is up there at the top of the screen. Like in Fallout 3, 4, and New Vegas, he assists in combat, but he looks completely different. Here he is again. He's highlighted in green in this shot. He looks like he's wearing road leathers. We don't see the trench coat or fedora that we're used to. But like the Mysterious Stranger we know, after the battle is done, he exits stage left. If you play as a woman, the mysterious stranger is a woman. If you play as a man, the stranger is a man. But in Fallout 3, the stranger is completely different. Now, the stranger in New Vegas and Fallout 3 are almost identical. And that's because Fallout New Vegas was built on top of Fallout 3. It shares the same framework and many of the same assets. One of those assets it shares is the mysterious stranger. But there are some differences. Here's the mysterious stranger from Fallout 3. And as you can see, gone are the road leathers from Fallout 1 and 2. And the stranger is exclusively male. He now sports the trench coat, fedora, and revolver, setting the framework for all mysterious strangers to come. The Fallout New Vegas version is very similar. The main differences are in the gun. The gun wielded by the New Vegas version of the Mysterious Stranger is engraved with elaborate swirls and patterns. But just like the Mysterious Stranger from Fallout 1 and 2, the New Vegas and the Fallout 3 version will appear seemingly from nowhere to aid you in combat. Each time he does, we hear his signature guitar riff. <laughs> In Fallout Shelter, the mysterious stranger is back although he functions in a different way, since the game takes place almost exclusively in a vault, with the exception of some side quests. We find the mysterious stranger in the vault. We hear the signature guitar riff, and then we have to find the stranger before he disappears. If we do, we get some loot, to help with our vault. In Fallout 4, the stranger is back and we get a little bit more information. Our favorite synth detective, Nick Valentine, is currently investigating the mysterious stranger. If you go into his office and look under Elia's bed, we find a case file on the mysterious stranger. In the note, Nick says that sightings of the mysterious stranger have been popping up sporadically across the United States for years. Based on reports, Nick thinks that the man is an amoral lunatic. This is because the stranger can help anyone in combat, someone with great karma who makes good choices, or a player with bad karma who makes bad choices. Worst case scenario, he's a prolific serial killer. Nick ties in the mysterious stranger from Fallout 4 with the previous Fallout games. He says that the mysterious stranger has been sighted from the NCR, the New California Republic, all the way to the East Coast, and that sightings of the mysterious stranger stretch back decades. His description, human male. Interesting that he omits the possibility of a human female from Fallout 1 and 2. He does admit that the outfits varied, but that recent sightings describe a large overcoat and fedora. Here he's referencing the road leathers from Fallout 1 and 2. Then he conjectures, is the stranger one man? Multiple men? 
a ghoul with minimal scarring, he brings up the ghoul possibility because this might explain the long passages of time between sightings. There is a great deal of time between the events of Fallout 1 and Fallout 4. Nick tries to explain the stranger's ability to vanish without a trace by suggesting that he might have access to some sort of advanced cloaking tech. A Chinese stealth suit, for example, or maybe even a stealth boy. And at the end, he lists all sighting locations. Commonwealth, confirmed, Fallout 4. Capital Wasteland, confirmed, Fallout 3. NCR, old rumors. Shady Sands, really old rumors, Fallout 1 and 2. Shady Sands, Fallout fans will recall, is the capital of the NCR, the New California Republic. The mysterious stranger is driving Nick Valentine mad. He's been on the case for years, and he's not any closer to solving it. If Nick Valentine is in your party when the mysterious stranger shows up, Nick freaks out. <laughs> Just here. You saw him, right? What the? The stranger slipped right through our fingers. You stop. Vanished. Note that the familiar guitar riff has changed from New Vegas in 3 to Fallout 4. The Fallout 4 version has also changed appearance. Like the 3 in Vegas 1, he wears a fedora and trench coat, but now the stranger wears a dapper mustache. His weapon of choice is less extravagant than the one in New Vegas, it's a simple 44 Magnum. Here I used console commands to summon the mysterious stranger to my location so I can show him off to you. In Fallout 4, if you try to attack the mysterious stranger, nothing happens. It's almost like he's not even there. His inventory is rather boring. He's got a snub-nosed 44 Magnum, a fedora, and a couple packs of cigarettes. Looks like our stranger is a smoker. The stranger in Fallout 3 and New Vegas is a little bit different. He's got a unique hat and outfit called the Mysterious Stranger Hat and Outfit, and the unique Stranger's 44 Magnum gun. This gun is programmed to be a one-hit kill. Like in Fallout 4, I used the console to summon the stranger to this location, but unlike 4, if you attack him in both 3 and in New Vegas, he'll kill you and your entire party in one hit. So we've established who the man is, but we haven't really solved any questions yet. Our greatest clue as to this man's true history is the existence of a man named the Lonesome Drifter. In Fallout New Vegas, we find the Lonesome Drifter sitting at a campsite next to a Sunset Sarsaparilla billboard just north of a Poseidon Energy gas station. We can talk with the man to learn his history. Howdy, little lady. He has a nice guitar with him. You can ask him about it. Oh, this old thing? Why, thanks, friend. This here guitar is just about the only thing my daddy left me. How long have you been playing? Just about my whole life. Ever since my daddy left Ma and me and went off to roam the wastes. Your daddy left you, huh? How long ago did he leave? Long time ago now. I never even knew him. Ma always said he was a mysterious fella, always traveling on in secret. So your father is a mysterious fellow, okay. Tell me a little bit more about yourself, Lonesome Drifter. Well, I was born in a little town out Montana way. Me and Ma didn't have much, ever since my pa up and left. And your father just left you and your mother alone? That he did. Never did know why. Ma always said he was a real mysterious fellow, even when he was with her. Like he was a stranger sometimes. Oh, so your father was a mysterious fellow like he was a stranger. Almost like a mysterious stranger? Well, maybe your father had a reason for leaving. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But that don't change the fact that it wasn't right. You know, if he hadn't left, you wouldn't be the man you are today. I suppose there's that. But a man ought to know his own paw. And a woman oughtn't to have to work herself to an early grave to provide for her family. Was your childhood difficult without your father around? It sure wasn't easy. Ma worked her fingers to the bone to make sure we had enough to survive, and I worked the coal mines from when I was 15. After Ma died, I guess I wanted to find my pa and get some answers from him. 
Been out here looking ever since, but he ain't an easy man to find. What'll you say to your father when you find him? Can't say as I really know. Maybe I'll just ask him why. Maybe I'll punch him right in the mouth. Hell, the more I talk about it, the more the whole damn thing sounds like a dumb idea. Now, if your courier is a male and if you have the lady killer perk, you can find out from the lonesome drifter how old he is. No, sir. I'm 28. Why? This is important because this number helps us establish when the Lonesome Drifter was born. But more importantly, if you have the quest from the Topps Casino that sends you out into the Mojave Wasteland looking for novelty acts, you can tell the Lonesome Drifter about the potential job and send him to the Topps as a performer. Hmm, maybe it's time to give these tired old bones a rest. All right, show me what you've got. You can then pass a barter check to ask for compensation. I suppose it's only right you get a little something for your troubles. Here, my daddy left me this gun. Guess I don't need it no more. He gives you his father's old revolver, which is called the Mysterious Magnum. He then walks north towards the Vegas Strip, and if you go to the Topps Casino at 10 o'clock p.m., we find him performing some of his solo hits. we have a lot of evidence that this man is the son of none other than the mysterious stranger. His mother describes his father as being a mysterious man who's kind of like a stranger. We hear a distinctive guitar riff every time the mysterious stranger arrives, and this lonesome drifter is skilled with which instrument? The guitar. Music may run in the family, but the best piece of evidence we have that the lonesome drifter is none other than the mysterious stranger's son is when you draw the mysterious magnum he gave you, we hear this sound. And when you holster the same gun, we hear this sound. This is unmistakably the exact same riff we hear when the mysterious stranger appears and disappears from nowhere. Now, when I used the console to summon the mysterious stranger to my location, I froze the scene, toggled the free cam, and examined both weapons side by side. The 44 Magnum that the mysterious stranger has, and the mysterious Magnum that the lonesome drifter gave us, the one he got from his father. As you can see, they are identical. So I think all of the evidence points to this man, the lonesome drifter, being the son of the mysterious stranger. Now we learn from the lonesome drifter that he is 28 years old. No, sir. I'm 28. Why? Now we know that the events of Fallout New Vegas begin in 2281. If the drifter is 28 years old and you meet him in 2281, that must mean that he was born in 2253. Now the mysterious stranger we find in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas look identical. But Fallout New Vegas only takes place four years after the events of Fallout 3. Fallout 3 takes place in 2277. It doesn't bother me then that the mysterious stranger from 3 and New Vegas look the same because not enough time has passed. However, he still looks relatively young. He almost looks like a 28-year-old himself. This must mean that if he's a normal human being, he must have had the Lonesome Drifter at a very young age. What do you think? How old do you think the mysterious stranger looks in this shot? If his son is 28 years old, and he had his son at, say, 18 years old, then in this shot, the mysterious stranger is 46 years old doesn't ring true to me. He doesn't look 46 years old. You know who does, though? The mysterious stranger from Fallout 4. He looks like an older fellow, in his early to mid-40s, maybe even 46 years old. But then again, that may just be the mustache. Maybe hiding behind that fluffy mustache is the rounded face of a younger man in his late 20s, early 30s. However, Fallout 4 takes place 10 years after the events of Fallout 3, in 2287 five years after the events of Fallout New Vegas. 
Does this man from Fallout 4 look like a 56-year-old man? Only five years elapsed between the events of New Vegas and Fallout 4. Does this look like five years worth of aging between the two men? To add further difficulty to this, we still have to explain Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. Fallout 1 takes place in 2161. 126 years before the events of Fallout 4. Now, naturally, humans don't live to be 126 years old. How can we explain this? Well, the oldest human in Fallout 4, and the man in all of Fallout lore to have lived the most years consecutively fully conscious, not asleep, is Lorenzo Cabot. He is over 400 years old. However, he's only that old because he found some sort of ancient, possibly alien artifact that affected his biology. It did something to his blood. Using his blood, his family members were also able to artificially extend their own lives. I covered the topic in greater detail in my video on the Cabot family, which if you're interested, you can watch here. So one explanation for the mysterious stranger being as old as he is, is if he, like Lorenzo Cabot, found some sort of ancient, possibly alien technology here on Earth. Now Lorenzo Cabot went mad due to long-term exposure to the ancient artifact that he found. One might say that the mysterious stranger is indeed mad. He pops out of nowhere, he kills things seemingly at random, and he abruptly left his family. Everyone else that old in lore are only that old because they were frozen. We find Paulson and Toshira Kago aboard the mothership Zeta. They are hundreds of years old, but only because they were abducted and frozen in time. The sole survivor, of course, but only because he or she was frozen in the cryopod, and then Robert House. But he has been kept in much the same way as John Caleb Bradburton. Both are extremely old, but neither are able to really function, move around, certainly not shoot anybody. The other option is one that Nick Valentine brought forth. Maybe the mysterious stranger is a ghoul. Maybe a ghoul with minimal scarring. But is that even possible? In Fallout New Vegas, we do find ghouls in various stages of ghoulification. For example, in Camp Searchlight, we find a man inside a home who's in the process of becoming a ghoul. But at that time, we really don't know if he's immortal yet. Yet. Could the mysterious stranger be a man who's on his way to becoming a ghoul, but the side effects of ghoulification haven't caught up with him yet? Possibly, but we have absolutely no evidence of this. No scarring, no ghoulification. He doesn't give anybody rads when he shows up in combat. So my bet is that he's not a ghoul. What other options are there? Well, maybe... He is a synth. Maybe he's working for the Institute secretly, and his ability to vanish is simply the Institute relay. This would handily explain his agelessness, because we know that synths do not age. However, they probably don't father children either. Synths do not age, they do not gain weight, and if you can't age or gain weight, it's probably likely that you can't procreate with a human female to create a child. Additionally, the Institute didn't even get the DNA they needed to make synths until 2227. That is when Conrad Kellogg entered Vault 111. That gives the Institute plenty of time to create Gen 3 synths in time for Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4, but not in time for Fallout 1 and 2. The only remaining option is that there's more than one mysterious stranger. This would explain why the mysterious stranger in Fallout 1 and 2 can be either a man or a woman. This would explain why the mysterious stranger in Fallout 1 and 2 wore completely different clothes from the mysterious stranger in the later games. But what this doesn't explain is how the mysterious stranger in Fallout New Vegas looks so young if he's supposed to be a 46-year-old man, which he must be if he was 18 years old when he fathered the Lonesome Drifter. Admittedly, I suppose he could have fathered him at a younger age, but still, there's a limit here. Here he is again, he just doesn't look 46 years old. So that is all the evidence. I think that the two best explanations we have so far are that A, the mysterious stranger is actually many people over time, and B, the mysterious stranger has some sort of artificial life-extending properties after exposure to some sort of alien artifact, like Lorenzo Cabot. So, which one is it? Well, in my opinion, I think the answer is both. In Fallout 1 and 2, the mysterious stranger was a completely different person. This person was granted supernatural powers due to exposure to some sort of ancient alien artifact. 
for some unexplained reasons, that mysterious stranger died or was abducted, but was never heard from again. Then, in the year 2253, a man in Montana fathered a child by his wife. He was a good man, he was a loving husband, he was an attentive father, but then one day at work, while he was digging in the mines, remember we learned that the lonesome drifter dug in a coal mine, Ma worked her fingers to the bone to make sure we had enough to survive. And I worked the coal mines from when I was 15. Probably because those were the only jobs available in Montana, and possibly because his family already had connections there because his father used to work as a coal miner. So one day, this father was digging in a coal mine when all of a sudden he found an ancient alien artifact. As soon as he touches the artifact, it permanently changes his personality. He drops what he's doing, he abandons his family, and he leaves to wander the world. Much in the same way that Lorenzo Cabot wanders the Commonwealth if you release him from the Parson State Insane Asylum. This ancient alien artifact has given this coal miner, now known as the Mysterious Stranger, some superhuman properties. The first being that he doesn't age. This would explain why he still looks like a young man 28 years after he fathers his son. And it gives him impressive combat abilities. He can teleport from one location to the next, seeming jumping out of the shadows at random, and his attacks are always one-hit kills. The major difference between the Mysterious Stranger and Lorenzo Cabot would be that Lorenzo Cabot mainly used telekinesis and psionic ability during combat, but the Mysterious Stranger channels everything he is, all of the powers he has, through his 44 Magnum. This would explain why the 44 Magnum that the Mysterious Stranger has in Fallout New Vegas is a one-hit kill while the other one that he left at home, that his son eventually took, and that his son eventually gives to you, is just a really nice 44 Magnum. It has some unique quirks, but it's not a one-hit kill. It also explains why the mysterious stranger still has the ability to kill enemies with one hit in Fallout 4 despite the fact that he's apparently lost his distinctive weapon from Fallout New Vegas. It would also explain why Nick Valentine thinks that he's a lunatic a sociopath. In Fallout 4, we see Lorenzo Cabot kill an entire group of ghouls just because he was curious about them. He wanted to see what made them tick. The mysterious stranger is equally unscrupulous. He kills for apparently no reason. He doesn't kill just good people. He doesn't kill just bad people. He'll kill anyone because the alien artifact has driven him mad like Lorenzo Cabot. Ten years after the events of Fallout 3, in 2287, the mysterious stranger has grown a rather stunning mustache, but otherwise he is none the worse for wear. He still appears to be a younger man, and he has all the same impressive combat abilities. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is my best guess, based on the evidence that we have available today, as to the true nature of the mysterious stranger in Fallout lore. But that is just one man's opinion. I've laid out all of the evidence before you. Do you have a different opinion? Have you come to different conclusions? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments, and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I produce a new video six days a week, so if you don't want to miss my Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, and even Fallout 3 content, be sure to subscribe and click that bell notification button. I've got a shirt shop, ladies and gentlemen, where I sell shirts with Oxhorn and Fallout 4 themed imagery. If you're interested, you can find the link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, as always, with a brand new video.